Well, sunny and hot in much of Ontario and British Columbia today. On Mars, it's mostly dusty. NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory is observing a dust storm, a massive one on Mars. National Geographic astronomy columnist Andrew Fazek is, is in Montreal with us today. Andrew, this is a, a dust storm that's huge. It's about three times the size of Canada. What's it doing to the Mars rover, I wonder? Well, this is just it. NASA is really looking very closely at the two rovers that they have. They have, uh, of course, Opportunity, a solar-powered rover, and Curiosity, which is nuclear-powered, uh, both on opposite sides of the planet. Now, Opportunity, that uses solar power, seems to be in trouble. Uh, they've, uh, they, uh, they think it's gone into a hibernation mode because the dust levels in the atmosphere above the rover has just become so thick that it's blocking out the sunlight, so much so that it cannot generate any power. So they've put it into hibernation mode and they're waiting to hear a signal. They haven't heard a signal now for the last couple of weeks. So they're hoping and, and really looking at to seeing if there's any breaks in, in the dust storm that would allow it to continue generating electricity. But this may be the last, uh, we may have heard of opportunity, but they're close. You know, it's pulled through before, but this is really a strong uh, 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 dust storm. Meanwhile, on the opposite side of the planet, Curiosity rover uh, is, is still in the clear, but it is noticing an uptick in the amount of dust in the atmosphere in that location as well. But the skies are still pretty much clear, and that rover doesn't have anything to worry about because it uh, has nuclear power. It can work mm. day and night and even through the, the, the largest dust storm. Well, those dust storms, how, how often do we see dust storms of this size and intensity? They occur about uh, four to six, uh, every four to six Earth years. Um, and this last one that we had on such a, a global scale like this was back in 2007. So uh, this is really something uh, that doesn't happen very often. And unlike that you see on the Hollywood movies, uh, like the, the movie Martian, uh, spacecrafts can't be toppled over by, by the dust storm. The winds are not that strong. They're clocked at about 30 to 40 kilometers per hour at oh. its peak. But it's just the amount of dust, it's the density of dust that can really wreak havoc to spacecrafts. Well, let's move on in our final minute, Andrew, uh, to this uh, discovery this week, this black hole that destroyed a star. I saw some pictures that were just amazing this week of it, and perhaps we have some pictures to show our viewers. Indeed, we do. Uh, tell us what we're looking at. Same picture you saw this week, no doubt, too, Andrew. Right. So what we're looking at is really a, a jet of material emanating from the mouth of a black hole. This is the first time we've seen a jet of material just careening out at near the speed of light out of the center of a, of a supermassive black hole that's sitting at a core of a galaxy about 150 million light years away. And what this action, what we're seeing is a star actually being gobbled up, being ripped apart, shredded by the massive gravity of the, the pull of the, of the black hole. And as it's being shredded, a lot of the material is being shot back up through this jet out into space. And that's what we're seeing for the very first time. And this is going to help scientists really understand how stars die and how black holes, which are at the center of galaxies, form and help the galaxies evolve. National Geographic astronomy columnist Andrew Fazekas, thanks a lot. Enjoy it. <laughs> Clear skies. <laughs>